A helpful listener has sent in this statistic. Mac Jones yesterday threw his fourth pick six at Gillette Stadium. That's as many as Tom Brady threw his entire career <laughs> at Gillette Stadium. We are happy to have Andrew Hawkins in with us. He studies film all day Saturday so he can be more informed, so that his takes can be stronger. You can hear the enthusiasm in his voice on Tomahawk, the podcast he now does with Hall of Famer Joe Thomas during the football season you sound like you were thrilled to have him back in your life that joe thomas uh, waddling in a hundred pounds lighter than <laughs> who back, wouldn't uh, be Dan? Oh, joe, player, joe's not uh, waddling you're, anymore you're just happy yeah. to have him around the things you're doing these days i am that's my guy we got good chemistry we went through a lot of like tough tough shit together you know and when you do that it forms a bond right and you're just happy not to be in those scenarios anymore. One win in two seasons. One win in two seasons. It, hurt. <laughs> it hurts. That, it physically, hurts. Physically, that physically hurts to play that way. It hurts. It's as bad. Uh, it's bad enough to physically feel the way you guys do on Monday, but to keep going into the locker room week 14, week 15 when you're winless, uh, it makes it hurt even more. That that makes it the worst part. It's like because you got to still trick yourself every week into thinking you're going to win. And after a while, it's like, oh, this is getting tough, brother. <laughs> did, were you able to trick yourself every season? or did, what, so one we, time against the Chargers. You know, it was, Hawk, it had to stop at Chargers. some point. Yeah, but it had to stop at some point. It did. You go into the games, and that was like, again, kind of the moment where it was like, this might be towards the end. Because I started going into the games, I would look across the 50-yard line at, at their team. And then I would look at our team, and I would say, yeah, there's no way we can win. That doesn't seem possible in the pros. That doesn't it, seem it, like a thing that would ever happen in professional exactly. football. Do you think the Giants feel that way yesterday? Do you think the Giants go into that game against the Dolphins? We were talking before we turned the microphones on about who has a better single unit than Philadelphia's offensive line. And you mm -hmm. said the Dolphins receivers yep. might be better than Philadelphia's offensive line. Do the Giants go into that game yesterday, or does Carolina go? into that game yesterday and we've got no chance we're not going to be able to score with them we're going to lose no that's a, that's a muscle that has developed over time you have to be there so maybe some guys are really like the seasoned guys who have been there and they've seen this movie a few times you start to diagnose like well this is here this is here and this is here and when that happens this is the result that's why coaches try to keep the locker rooms young, <laughs> fresh. After a while, you got to get out because now you know the same speech that I'm going to tell when this happens. And so, yeah, that's a that's a veteran thought process. What are you seeing from the 49ers? Uh, is there anything that is jumping out to you in the film that you're watching? They are extremely talented, obviously. But more than that, they are extremely well coached. They are coached better than most of the teams, if not every team in the National Football League. And when you watch them against the Cowboys, yes, the players play great. Brock Purdy is at an MVP level, right? This is Mr. Irrelevant. But at the same time, when you watch the way those plays are hitting, when you see that George Kittle over the middle, and it's like, oh, those are good plays. When you look at the film, you're watching how they're using pre-snap motion because they know exactly what the Cowboys are going to do. They know how their players will respond. And the answers to the test are already embedded in the play. So Brock Purdy doesn't have to do having to do much he's not having to read much he's processing and he's going right where they've told him because it's set up perfectly it's interesting be because they're coached so well that people are saying if mac jones were on the san francisco 49ers that he'd be doing what brock purdy is doing currently with the 49ers do you agree with that because i don't i disagree okay i dis i disagree because i think yes brock purdy is is in an advantageous situation and i always say this about the shanahan offense it makes bad quarterbacks look decent Decent quarterbacks look good. Good quarterbacks look great. And great quarterbacks, MVP level caliber players. So wherever you want to put Brock Purdy into that matrix, he is that. He has a bunch of ability. Like I said, he is a next level processor. He can make a lot of the throws. And more importantly, he anticipates where the ball should go. Mac Jones, if you're looking from his rookie year to now, he has regressed in those areas. And some of it is coaching. Yes. Some of it is talent on the outside. Absolutely. But when I watch the Jets game, against the Patriots, and everybody that week was railing on Zach Wilson. This guy is so bad. He shouldn't be in the NFL. He shouldn't do this. It was a wet game, yes, but when I watched it, and I watched both sides of the game, with the exception of a lucky pass that the Jets secondary busted on, I said Mac Jones played no better than Zach Wilson. Why? There were at least three, maybe four passes where receivers had guys beat down the field and he did not put the ball where it needed to be. And those are big plays that if you are a starting NFL caliber quarterback, 
You cannot miss one, let alone three of them. So that means he cannot push the ball down the field. And if you can't push the ball down the field, you cannot play in Shanahan's offense. I saw a stat before the Dolphin game. The Dolphin inside linebackers before the game had had 28 passes thrown in their direction as targets, and they'd been completed 27 times for 300-something yards. The point that you just made about the 49ers was illustrated last night when they put Debo in motion, and you saw as soon as he goes in motion, that's Debo Samuel against a linebacker. That is an easy throw. Whatever direction Debo decides to go in, the linebacker, there's not a linebacker in the league. Nope. Maybe it's on his team. Maybe on his team. <laughs> maybe, yeah, right? maybe, yeah. the one, maybe the one on his team can, can, can cover that, but there's not another linebacker who can cover Debo Samuel in the open field there. That makes for, for an easy throw for any competent quarterback. That's what good quarterbacks know. They, they know their matchups. Yes, there is the X's and O's portion of it, but at some point, and, and at a lot of points in the game, especially when you're in a Shanahan game plan, I'm going to match up this good player versus a player that I don't think can beat him, and we're going to win every time because his skill set is, is perfectly matched against the things that you're not good at. And even more than that, when these players are motioning, you'll watch the defender shift, and it's literally creating the vacancy that they're going to hit. So I'm only sending this for that linebacker to take two steps over and then keep his eyes that way, and I'm going to throw right off his ear. And Brock Purdy is throwing those passes at an incredibly high, accurate clip with anticipation. He knows where it needs to be. His ball placement is impeccable, and Mac Jones just isn't playing like that. Even on the plays that are there, he's not executing them. And that's why I will not say that if Mac Jones is in Brock Purdy's situation, (laughs) he will be that because he won't be. What innovative new things has Kyle Shanahan picked up on since you were with Kyle Shanahan over in Cleveland? Because I always get a little bit of a chuckle when people say guys like Mike McDaniel and Kyle Shanahan, they're these innovators, when the, the bones of the offense have been around for 40 years. Yeah, The Shanahan offense was just that ahead of the time several decades ago. What is he doing that's new, that you're putting on the tape and you're like, well, this is a, a new look for Kyle. That We weren't doing much of that in Cleveland. Because I, I think, and it's hard to pinpoint one thing, because what Kyle does is he bases his offense off of the players that he has. So, yes, when he had me as his leading receiver, which is not a great scenario to be in. I'm self-aware enough to know if your number one receiver is 5'7", there is going to be limitations. Right? Unless you're, unless you're the Dolphins. <laughs> unless you're the Dolphins. But I, and I can get into that, too, of why that makes sense now. But even in that scenario, he set it up to play towards my strengths. And that offense looked completely different than the offense he was in the year before or the offense that he called the year after in Atlanta because the personnel was always different, right? And so when they call him an innovator, when they call McDaniel an innovator, it's not because they're taking their offense and saying, you're going to run this exactly the way it is now. No, they're saying, okay, here's the 60% that never changes, and here's how we change the 40% every year based on the 53 guys we have in there. And so that's what makes those offenses super special is because it's not going to look the same as it was the year before. I want to play for you, and I will in a second, some RG3 sound from last week that mm-hmm. uh, that jumps off of that point. But before I do that, I wanted to talk to Stu Gatz about how he felt about uh, the ridiculous Nathaniel Hackett game, which is not <laughs> something that I was expecting. That, uh, there, that There were interesting games in that 4 o'clock window yesterday. The only interesting thing about the Denver Jets game was the offseason of Peyton saying that the Denver Broncos were coached more poorly than any team he's ever Mm. seen before he inherited them that led to Aaron Rodgers protecting Nathaniel Hackett his offensive coordinator with the Jets and saying keep my coach's name out of your mouth and then yesterday after the game lip readers saw that Salah uh, when he's saying a good game to uh, Sean Payton tells him stay humble which (laughs) might be something he might be something he says all the time to coaches but this one landed differently telling Sean Payton to stay humble Humble. If I'm Sean Payton in that spot, it's about the last thing I want to hear from the opposing <laughs> coach. But what? Did but you... you're going to hear it because you said stuff on the front end about Nathaniel Hackett. So you're going to hear it. Not after you beat somebody like that. I, I understand. Like you don't need. To they say, beat him, Dan. You, but you don't need to say anything else. The scoreboard does enough for you there. <sighs> I like it. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you, Dan. I like. I like it. If you if you want to talk, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Right. And maybe he wouldn't say that if you weren't the one to come out. And, you know, also coordinators and players, they want coaches that have their back in some respects. And, 
Yeah, Sean Payton. I, I didn't mind Sean Payton's comments either, to be honest with I you. I don't mind any of them. It's yeah. good for me. I yes. just don't think that I would like it very much if I were Sean Payton. The all. Sean Payton that knows the current quarterback is not going to be his quarterback a year from now is my favorite Sean Payton. <laughs> like, it's the Russell Wilson. Speaking of things you didn't need to hear, Russell did not need to hear from Sean Payton as he left the field after turning the ball over. Just didn't need to hear it, and Payton gave him the business anyway. It was great. It, when, when, things are, when the <laughs> chips are down... It's funny to watch every time that the teams, the coaches, the players, everyone starts to point the finger, right? Because someone has to take blame for this. And Sean Payton coming out saying how horribly coached the Broncos were, right? It does set up the Natty Hackett Bowl. Yes. And again, I don't. Right. I, I, they were horribly coached. It was really bad. It, it, that, that's a fact of the matter, but you just don't typically hear that from one coach to another. The reason why I don't mind it is because we history has a way of remembering players and coaches fondly who call their shot, Right. And if it because it's high risk, if he says that now he has the Broncos clicking on all cylinders and he goes out there and he kicks the Jets butt, everyone's talking about Sean Payton like, oh man, they should have gave up more picks. You talk about an incredible move. That's not the case. And That's instead, not what it looks like we're right like, now. you know what? Looks like the game is passing you by, buddy. But Dan, I was thrilled with the victory. A, we needed it, uh, so we're two and three. We're we're in the mix. <laughs> 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 and B, the defense played really well. But most importantly, because I said this last year when he went down, when Brees Hall got injured last year, that was the end of the Jets' season. And mm-hmm. to see Brees Hall without a pitch count. He could carry the ball as many times as they wanted him to carry the ball yesterday, have 22 carries, 177 yards, and a touchdown. Like, they're a different team when that guy is healthy. And Zach Wilson looks competent. And that had to be really unpleasant for him to go through. The the, Whatever that felt like to him. What, Joe Joe Namath kicking him out of the NFL? He should be ashamed of himself. Damian Woody, famous Jets. Mike Greenberg. Putting their name, Jets fans, putting their name on, please don't allow Zach Wilson, never mind into my huddle, into my stadium yeah, but anymore. Br- to Sue's point, wrong. Brees Hall makes that all so much easier. It was yes. in that game last year where he was killing it that he got hurt against Denver. It makes it a lot easier for a young quarterback. It, it does, absolutely. And the coaching. And I will also say Nathaniel Hackett has played a better game in the last two weeks as well, right? Because you don't have Aaron Rodgers. And it is the easiest coaching job in the world to put Aaron Rodgers out there and say, hey, go figure it out. You can literally throw any play. Stu Gotts would be a head coach in two years if he was hired as the offensive coordinator for Aaron Rodgers. I've got a serious question for you off of the UM game. If you took the people in this room, all, all right. of us, I'm, just I'm the evaluating. Same, you put us in the University of Miami offense with 40 seconds left in that game yesterday, <laughs> uh, on Saturday, how many times do we play that game and end up with that result when all we have to do is kneel one time to finish the football game? <laughs> if we put all of us in uniform, give me a number. How many games? How many? The number of games that we would have to play. With, Mario is still the coach, though. Right? Everything is the same, okay. but he except <laughs> except they they are calling timeout. They are. I'm saying they're, they're kneeling. kneeling. They're kneeling one time. Okay, <laughs> on offense. So the defense is still the same. You guys aren't playing defense. No, we're on offense for the University of Miami, and all we have to do is take a snap. And we're not even – we're just complimentary players. We are not not the center nor the quarterback. Okay. How many times are we playing that game (laughs) before we get the result that the University of Miami got on I would say you would win 98 – maybe 98 times out of 100. Because I'm going to say two million times. Two million? <laughs> two million. Well, I, I just figured one of the plays, like, Stu's got to guard. Not, we're not the center? We're not the center or the, the center quarterback? Or so we're not screwing up the snap. No, we're not doing – but, yeah. but, like, one of those times – No, I'm the, the running back that wants to get to 100 yards. <laughs> okay, whoever – I'm just a pitcher in Stu got at guard, and the D-line just blows him up before the quarterback gets his knee down. He fumbles. They no, pick it up and take it. So putting, I'm like, at least twice that's going to happen. We're putting Stu in motion. Okay. <laughs> All right. 